What I was saying is we're going to be reading the third and fourth chapters of this book. And what we've learned so far is that Jenny B and Grace want to know about the rich Nana. But Lucille got upset that they were talking to her Nana because Lucille was trying to convince her Nana to get her a poodle. And she thinks that because of them, she's not going to get a poodle. But Jenny B and Grace decide that they're going to help try to convince Lucille's Nana to get them, get her a poodle. So that is where we are in the book. Let's see. All right. So remember, this is a chapter book. So there's not very many pictures, but if there is a picture, I will show you. All right. Chapter three is called The Rules. Guess what? Guess what? On Friday, Lucille's Nana called my mother, and she invited me to spend the night with Lucille on Saturday. And mother didn't even say no. My feet zoomed all around the house when I heard that. I'm spending the night. I'm spending the night. I'm spending the night. The night. The night. I shouted. I zoomed into my baby brother Ollie's room. Hey, Ollie, I'm spending the night. I'm spending the night. I'm spending the... Just then, mother ran in the door and she swished me right out of there. It was not pleasant. I brushed myself off. Yeah, only you shouldn't actually swish people, I said kind of quiet. Mother raised her voice at me. How many times, Junie B? How many times have I told you to stay out of Ollie's room while he's sleeping? Huh? How many? I think for a minute. A million bazillion, I said. But that is just a ballpark figure. Mother glared at me very mad. I rocked back and forth on my feet. A ballpark figure is when you don't know the actual figure, and so you make up a figure, because that will get people off your back, I explained. My boyfriend named Ricardo told me that. His father sells insurance, I believe. Mother tapped her angry foot. We are not talking about Ricardo's father, Junie B. We are talking about going into Ollie's room while he's sleeping, and besides, I haven't said that you could spend the night at Lucille's. I want to talk it over with your father first. I hugged her leg. Please, mother, please, please. I'll be good. I promise, I promise, I... Just then, the front door opened. It was my daddy. He was home from work. I run to him like a speedy rocket. Then I hugged his leg, too, and he couldn't even shake me off. I'll be good, Daddy, I promise, I promise, I promise. All of a sudden, Mother swished me away again. She put me down in the living room. Then she and Daddy did whispering in the hall. And guess what? They said I could go to Lucille's. Yippee, 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 I shouted. After that, I started to zoom some more. But Daddy gripped, Daddy quick grabbed me by my belt. Yeah, only here's the problem. I'm not actually zooming, I told him. No, here's the problem, said Daddy. Before you spend the night with Lucille, you have to agree to the rules. I raised up my eyebrows. Rules, I asked. There's rules involved? Lots of rules, said Daddy. Then he and Mother bended down next to me, and they told me the rules of spending the night. They are no running, no jumping, no shouting, no squealing, no hollering, no snooping, no spying, no arguing, no fighting, no cheating at games, no talking back to the Nana, no breaking other people's toys, no grumping, no crying, no fibbing, no tickling of people when they say no, no staying up late, and absolutely no headbutting. After I heard the rules, I did a sigh. <sighs> yeah. Only that doesn't actually leave me with much to work with, I said. Mother ruffled my hair. Sorry, kiddo, but that's the deal, she said. Take it or leave it. Take it, I shouted out. I'll take the deal. Then I kissed mother and daddy on their cheeks, and I hugged them very tight, and they couldn't shake me off again. Okay, now chapter four is called Packing My Bags. 
The next morning was Saturday. I jumped out of bed and ran to the kitchen. Then I got a big, giant plastic bag, and I ran back to my room to pack for Lucille's. First, I packed my favorite pillow. Then I packed my pajamas and my bathrobe and my slippers that looked like bunnies. Also, I packed my blanket and my sheets and a small, attractive throw rug. Finally, I packed my stuffed elephant named Philip Johnny Bob. He looked up at me from inside the bag. Yeah, only here's the problem, he said. You're not actually supposed to put me in a plastic bag, because I could suffocate in this thing. My eyes got big and wide. Oh no, I said, real upset. I forgot about that. That's how come I quick got my scissors and cut air holes for that guy. Philip Johnny Bob sniffed the air. Better, he said. I petted his trunk. Then I went into the family room and I watched cartoons till Mother got up. Pretty soon, I heard her slippers in the hall. Mother, Mother, I'm all ready, I said. I'm all ready to go to Lucille's. I pulled Mother into my room and showed her my plastic bag. Mother shook her head. Way too much stuff, she said. Then she got a teeny suitcase from the shelf and she packed my pajamas and my slippers and my robe and my toothbrush. After that, she got a sleeping bag from her closet and she put my pillow on top of it. There, that's all you'll need. You're all set, she said. I springed into the air. All set, I hollered real joyful. Jenny B. Jones is all set for Lucille's. After that, I quick grabbed Philip Johnny Bob and I dragged my stuff to the front door. All righty, let's be on our way, I shouted very excited. Mother was in baby Ollie's room. She didn't come. Okie doke, I'm going outside now. Junie B is going outside to get in the car, I shouted louder. Just then, Mother runned to get me. No, Junie B, no, I'm not taking you to Lucille's, remember? Lucille's Nana is picking you up at three o'clock. I told you that. I'm sure I did. All of a sudden, my shoulders got very slumping, because I didn't actually remember that information, that's why. Darn, I said very sad. Three o'clock takes forever. After that, I slumped to the table and I ate my breakfast. Then I sat on my front step and I swinged on my swings and I read some books and I ate a cheese sandwich and I counted to a million bazillion and I sat on my step some more. And then guess what? Three o'clock finally came. I saw the big gold car in my driveway. Hey, she's here, she's here, she's here, I yelled real thrilled. Mother and Daddy hurried to the door. Are you ready to go, said Mother. Ready, I yelled. Junie B is ready to go. The Richie Nana got out of her car, and I throwed my arms around her. Hello, Nana, hello, hello. I've been waiting for you the whole live long day. Mother pulled me off that woman. Sorry, she said. I'm afraid Junie B has a little extra energy in her. She's been sitting on the step for hours. I leaped way high in the air. Sitting on the step, I said. Junie B has been sitting on the step. Daddy and Mother carried my things to the big gold cattle act. And guess what? When they opened the door, Lucille and that Grace were already in the back seat. Lucille, Grace, I didn't even know you were already here. And so this is a delightful surprise. I reached inside to try to tickle them, but Mother pulled my hand away. Please, Junie B, don't start, she said. I saluted her. Aye, aye, Captain, I said, real hilarious. After that, I got in the car and I bounced on the softy seat. Only too bad for me, because I accidentally bounced too high and I banged my head on the roof. The Nana did a gasp, and I patted her. Yeah, only that didn't faze me, I said. 
After that, I buckled up my seatbelt, and I waved goodbye to Mother and Daddy, and the Nana drove us away. Okay, so that was the last chapter for tonight, but the next chapter is called Going to the Ball. So, if you were listening tonight, I want you to think about your predictions for what you think will happen in the next chapter, next time we read. All right, thanks for coming, and I had a really fun time reading. See you next time. Bye.